It is really nice to have a friend that taps you on the shoulder and lets you know you have some meat in your feet. And the Minter and the Burger on Apps Meet is just that friend you need while building out your applications. In this video, we're going to take a deep dive into the Linter and the Burger and I'm going to show you some examples of where they can be really helpful as you go along building your applications. My name is Confidence and I'm a dev advocate at Apps Meet. Without any delay, let's get started. Alright, so right here we have a simple application that has a couple of queries and the first query I'm going to show you is the get movies query. It's a simple query that returns a list of movies as you can see and we have all of this showing up right here. So one issue that may come up while building out queries, especially API queries, is authentication and you may run into some authentication issues and that just leads to a lot of errors in your apps. So let me show you an example. I have this API key right here and I'm going to mess things up and try to make a request. And you can see that we have um, everything going wrong in the app. You have errors here, you have errors here and everything's just looking so bad. In fact, you might be in a different part of the app, probably working on your table widget right here when you run into these errors. And the debugger is really helpful to help you catch these errors. So right here to the corner, I think you can see this. You have a bug icon with a number showing you that you have one error. So you can click on it and this actually tells you where the error is coming from so that you can jump back to the query or API or wherever it is in your application that is causing this error. So right here, we have the error coming from the get movies query and I can click on that and you can see we're back here to in order to fix the error that just came up. And taking a look back at the debugger, um, you can also go to the errors tab since we are right here in the API pane. Uh, you can head to the errors tab. This shows exactly what the error is. So you have the status code here saying 41 unauthorized because we just messed up our API key. You also have that error here showing you what specifically the status code of the error is for one unauthorized and you have the response coming back from the api saying uh, you have an invalid api key so this already gives you a lot of context to know what went wrong so that you can go fix that so let's head back to fix this and running this should work as usual yes it did no signs of trouble here and we have some data coming back you can also run into errors due to invalid URLs. For example, I'm just going to mess up the URL and type in a URL I know that does not exist and we can go run this. And here you see that we run into errors. So we can similarly click on the bug icon or head to the errors tab since we're already here in the API pane and we can see where the error is coming from. It's coming from the get movies query and uh, you have the status code of 404 which means the resource was not found. So all of this is really helpful to let you know where the error comes from so that you can go fix that. And I'm similarly going to fix this and let's try this again. And now everything works. The same thing also applies to DB queries. So all we have just taken a look at is for API calls and we can see how to fix errors coming from API calls. So to show you an example of how to fix and debug errors on db queries i have a simple get user query which is a postgres query as you can see i have the postgres db configured right here and uh, running this actually returns a list of users as you see from the query so everything looks good right now but what if, if i want to add a filter and then run into errors while trying to add the filter or make mistakes while trying to add the filter say for example i need to add a where clause for the name and say name equal Sophia, all right? So we can go run this, and as you already guessed, we would run into an error. Um, taking a look at what the error is, because um, we actually have really helpful error messages here in the debugger. It says um, the column names does not exist. The column names does not exist. Perhaps I meant to use user.names. It actually also gives a suggestion of what the possible cause of the error is. So I can head back and fix the error based on the feedback I've gotten from the debugger. So this should not be names, rather it should be name. And I can fix that. Let's run this. And you can see we have just that user coming in. And I can also make similar errors when it comes to um, the quotes here. Instead of using single quotes, I could use double quotes, for example. And this is just going to lead to more errors, as you can guess. 
and here it says the column Sophia does not exist. So it tells you the position where the error is coming from and actually tells you that um, the error is coming from the string Sophia. So I can easily head back here, fix this and we know everything is going to work right now as it has been fixed. So these are errors that you may run into when using APIs or DB queries, authentication errors, you have errors with invalid URL, or you have invalid query structure. These are some of the errors you could run into, and that's how easy it is to fix them using the debugger. I'm also going to show you how to fix errors in JavaScript files. So I'm just going to create a new JavaScript file, and right here we have a javascript file and let us clean this up i'm going to write a js function that performs a transformation on the get movies query so heading back to the get movies query we have a field right here that is the search field which actually contains the data for the movies so let's write a transform function that actually returns just the search key so let's head back i'm going to rename this to utils and call this function movies all right, and for the code, this is going to be where I do the transformation. All right, now I'm done typing. And as I was typing, I'm sure most of you already caught lots of errors in what I was doing. Uh, the first error I have right here, in fact, the linter already tells me that I have errors in this word and also right here, I also have an error here. And we can go to the errors tab or similarly click on the debugger icon just in case we are working in a different part of the application, we can click on the debugger icon, click on JS object, and we will be brought right here to the JavaScript file that causes the error. And you can see from the JavaScript file, it says um, this word, which we actually wanted to type return for, this typo is undefined because JavaScript does not know what this word is. Similar error is also shown here for get movie. It's saying we don't actually have a query called get movie. What we have right here is a query for get movies. And we can easily fix that um, by making use of the suggestions we have right here from the debugger. And same thing also shows right here in the linter. When you go over to hover over where you have the red underline, it tells you that um, get movie is not defined. So we can easily fix this by adding an S right here and fixing the return. So this is going to be return. And here we have everything looking good. So we can go run this and you see that we have the array of movies and then we can use this in building our app. So let's make use of the response from um, the file right here. So this is going to be, this is going to be JS object one dot movies. All right, and we have that data showing up on the table. Another possible source of errors is when you're binding data into a widget. Each widget has a specific data structure it expects. So for example, the table widget expects an array of objects. So I'm just going to show you that quickly. This is an array and we need to pass in an array containing a list of objects, at least one object. And that's the expected structure for the table widget. So if we go mess things up or make a mistake to pass in a wrong data structure, for example, I pass in a string saying hello, you can imagine that that is going to throw an error. And you can see we have the error warning right here on the debugger and also right here in the pane of the table widget. So we can take a look at this to see what the error is and error is coming from the table widget. And we can easily fix this by reading the error message. So right here, it says that the value we've passed in does not evaluate to the type of an array of objects. So which means we're passing in the wrong structure. And we can take a look at the expected structure here to get an idea of what is required for us to pass in and see an example as well. So we have an example right there. All right, so we have an example right there. This should be an array containing objects. And if we go pass in an array of objects, for example, so this is an array containing an object name, John and age five, you can see that that is actually rendered into the table because this is an array of objects. So you need to have in mind that it is necessary for you to pass in the right um, data structure for each widget. And the table, for example, expects an array 
of objects. Um, now we have everything looking good because we have fixed the error. So these are a couple of use cases for the linter and debugger, and I hope they help you catch bugs in your applications before you actually deploy them. That'll be all for today's video. This is just a short video to show you how to use the linter and debugger. If you have any questions, please do let us know in the comment section, and I'll definitely take your questions. All right, that'll be all for today's video. See you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.